So our next reader is Mark Tuffy. Mark, okay. I'm going to read a piece from John B. Lee's anthology, Window Fishing. Uh, this was sort of a, a commission from John, I, I would say. Uh, and uh, John is a wonderful uh, friend and beetle buddy and uh, uh, poet and volume This piece is called, yes, this always happens when you sort of grab the book off the table as you go. Here we go. This piece is called The Handshake. On November 19th, 1997, a group of friends and I had gone to Carnegie Hall to hear Paul McCartney's then new orchestral piece, Standing Stone. We also had tickets for Paul McCartney's appearance the very next morning in the Oprah Winfrey show. In order to get good seats, however, it was necessary to line up hours ahead of time. When I arrived in the middle of the night to line up, there was no one else there. Actually, there was one other person there. That person was asleep on the sidewalk, oblivious to my presence. I strongly suspect that he wasn't actually there to watch Paul McCartney perform on the Oprah Winfrey show. Gradually, a line began to form, and one by one, my friends joined me. At one point, the people from the Oprah show came and gave everyone in line hot chocolate. Security was tight. We were searched before entering. They let me keep a CD, which I brought along to give Paul if I got a chance. The CD featured a classical piece by Leos Janacek, which sounded a bit like McCartney's piano composition, A Leaf. The orchestral version of A Leaf had been played at Carnegie Hall the night before and had been well received. Before either Oprah or Paul entered, the producers came in and rehearsed the crowd and cheering. The producers were quite serious about elevating the level of our cheers so that the energy was at a fever pitch when Paul came in. They kept asking us to get louder. However, our rehearsal didn't prepare anyone for how the roof was blown off the place. When Paul finally entered, calm and relaxed. I was told afterwards that he received the biggest cheer they had ever had on the show. Waiting all night had its advantages. We managed to get seats in the front row at the same level as the stage. Paul occupied the chair directly facing us. The fact that we were sitting within easy conversational distance gave us the opportunity to chit chat with Paul during the commercial breaks. In one case, the crew came in to dab his face, probably to remove the beads of pest perspiration that filled up under the hot lights. The breaks were short. Long answers weren't possible, but if you were quick, you could get a brief answer to a specific question while the crew busied themselves. I asked Paul, for instance, whether he was working in new classical music. Oh, oh yes, yes, definitely. After Oprah finished her interview, the audience was given an opportunity to ask Paul questions. To my delight, Paul pointed at me to ask the last question. I mentally rehearsed my question several times to make sure I got it right. We were all charmed by the orchestral version of a leaf at last night's Standing Stone. How did you write the original piece and what was involved in putting together the orchestral version? Paul gave a lengthy answer. The gist of Paul's response was, I brought in Jonathan Tunick and we did an arrangement. Rather than directing his answer to Oprah, he spoke directly to me. When Paul gives you his attention, it is his entire attention. I had a chance to speak with other people who had asked him questions and they said that they had the same experience. After the interview portion ended, Paul played songs from his then new release, Playing Pie. This was an album which marked the beginning of what I like to call the McCartney Renaissance, seemingly, seemingly spurred on by the Beatles anthology and his newfound willingness to reclaim his past. In a hundred years, we may only remember the Beatles catalog, 
Or we may make a little distinction between the work of the fabs together and their best solo work. Or we may pick certain periods to cherish. If so, this will be one of them. As the show ended, the audience cheered. One final, long cheer. I noticed a couple of people going up to shake his hand, so I, I followed suit. I, I had expected a bassist handshake, beefy somehow. Instead, I encountered long, thin fingers, almost delicate, a painter's hands. An almost perfect day. I have only one regret. I didn't reach for the CD I brought to give him. So Paul, if you happen to be reading this, <laughs> you might want to check out Yanichek's On the Overgrown Path. You'll be glad you did. Mm. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. That was a good story.